Hey everyone, welcome to another Folk of Gore miniature painting tutorial where I'm going to show you how I painted this plague marine in the scheme of the glooming lords of the 6th plague company of the Death Guard. This paint scheme was actually requested by Crucible52. If you have a request and you want to see some miniature paints in a grimdark style then just leave a comment below or message me on Instagram or Facebook, whatever. Links to all the ways you can contact me are in the description below. Here's what the Plague Marine is going to look like in the end. He has a proper black armor, but with a dark green color worked into it. The trim of his armor has that green metallic look that you could see in the reference picture I showed earlier. I'm going for a bit more and a lot brighter rust, because that will contrast well with the rest of the model. But for the rest, I'm staying as close as I can to the reference. I primed this model black and then sprayed with a white primer from the top to get a zenithal highlight. The first layer I'm applying here is ashen grey and I'm doing that as a very heavy dry brushing technique. I just dab off a little bit of the paint on a piece of paper and then I go all over the model. And it's fine if you don't cover the primer completely and if some of the base layer shines through. Then to add that green look to the armor I'm dry brushing with iron rack skin. This is a very desaturated green that gives this sickly look. And I'm dry brushing all over the armor and I'm also painting the cloth of the hood and the cape of this plate marine with the same paint. Then I dry brush lightly all over the armor with grey sear. This will dull the green down a bit and it makes the highlights pop a bit more. It might sound counterintuitive but if you want a grim dark look you need a lot of contrast and the bright highlights will help with that. So now it's time for a wash of the whole model and I'm using Ethonian camo shade for this. Both the armor and the cloth get a wash with this. It will make the cloak and the hood look even more disgusting and makes the head a bright focal point of the model. Now I'm going to make a couple mistakes, but I'm keeping these in the video so you can see how I paint a model in a scheme that I've never done before. And you can see how easy it is to fix these mistakes when you make them yourself. I'm starting by painting the tentacles in Bugman's Glow. This is a good base paint for most flesh and skin tones, but I will later replace this with a dark purple because I already have so many desaturated colors on the model and some more vibrant spots will make it look better. And then here's the second mistake I'm making. I'm painting the horns and the spikes in Rhinox Hide. This is a dark brown paint and it's usually pretty good for antlers and spikes, but I will later look at this model and paint them in a bone color instead. Once the armor is blackened, these horns would just disappear if they don't get a light color instead. So no more mistakes from here on. Uh, the trim of the armor in the reference picture is a metallic green. Now, you could try mixing paints and then painting them like that, but I prefer to work with easier methods. So instead, I'm starting the trim by painting it in lead belcher and later I'm going over it with a contrast paint. But while the trim dries, I'm just going to paint in some details with Abaddon Black. I'm painting the little hoses and the joints in the armor with this and when I'm painting black, I usually don't use Abaddon Black unless I want to make it obvious that I'm painting this material in a different texture than the neighboring materials that will also be black. In the reference picture, you can see that the Glooming Lord's Plague Marines have black armor and so I need to darken the armor quite a lot. I initially thought that non-oil would do the trick, but after washing the Power Fist with the shade, I quickly realized that this just wouldn't darken the model enough. So instead, I'm going for Contrast Black Templar. I like using contrast paints over regular paints in this way. The armor will definitely look black, but the edges will still have a slightly green tint due to the dry brushing that I did as the base layer. And now the metallic trim gets a layer of Contrast Militarum Green. If you use contrast paints over a metallic paint, you will get a metallic part in the color of that contrast paint. It's that simple to get tinted metal on your miniatures. And the great thing is that you don't have to mix paints and you'll always get the same results on all your minis, even if you don't paint them all at the same time. So now it's time to add some rust to the armor and the weapon of the Marine. 
I'm going to do this in my usual rust recipe for the Death Guard. I first dab on some Typhus Corrosion and uh, this goes on the weapon and on the spots of the armor that already have cracks in them or that are bursting open because of those spikes. The next two steps will make your rust look a lot more realistic, but if you're looking for a fast rust effect, then you could skip these two and you'll still have a decent looking effect. I'm starting by dabbing on some Rhinox Hide on the same spots where I dabbed on Typhus Corrosion earlier. Then I do the same, but with Morn Fang Brown. Both of these steps are just to get some color variation on the rust that will give a more interesting look. This works especially well when you do a bigger surface with this rust effect, such as the sword. Then I dry brush all the rust with Ryza Rust. This bright orange will get on all the edges and on the texture that's left behind by the typhus corrosion. It will really make these spots of rust pop. Now if you're liking this video so far, then please give it a like because that would really help me out. I would really appreciate it. So now it's time to fix the two mistakes that I made earlier with the tentacles and the horns and spikes. I'm going over the tentacles with Screamer Pink to make them more vibrant. And I'm just painting over the Bugman's glow. And the horns are going to get a layer of iron rack skin. This is the same sickly green that I used for the cloth. And I'll shade it differently though, so that it won't look the same in the end result. So here I'm shading the tentacles, first with Drakenhof Nightshade. This is a dark blue shade and it's fantastic if you want to make some amazing purple tints. Just paint a reddish base color and then shade it with this blue for a very cool effect. Now, I didn't paint the fly at the top of the plate marine because I didn't really know what to do with it. I wanted it to really stand out from the model but still fit in with the color scheme. And I want to paint it in such a way that the paint scheme of the fly could be used for any demons that you might add to a Death Guard army. So to start, I'm doing the body of the fly in contrast shyish purple. This deep and dark purple goes well with the fleshy tentacles that the marine is showing. And then I paint the wings with the same iron rack skin that I did the cloth and the horns of the marine with. While this is drying, I go over the horns with Seraphim Sepia and now they stand out from the model a lot more and they're no longer disappearing against that black armor. After this is dry, I just dry brush the tips of these horns with Tyrant's Skull and then they're done. The fly still needs a bit of work. So I'm shading the wings with Athonian Camel Shade so that the wings have the same color as the cloth of the marine. Now, I wanted to make the face of the fly super bright, so I'm first painting it with Contrast Plague Bearer Flesh, which is another tone of sickly green. But then I immediately go over that with a technical paint called Hex Wraith Flame, which is a kind of glowing green paint. And that really makes this fly stand out. And then it's time for the one paint that every Plague Marine should have some of, and that is Nurgle's Rot. This technical paint is perfect for all the slime effects. I'm painting this in all the places where it could ooze out of the armor and on the fleshy bits. I also paint it on all the bulbs that are on the tentacles. And I let it ooze out of the skulls on his armor. After basing the Plague Marine with some Astro Granite debris and dry brushing his feet with some Ashen Grey, by the way, to make him blend a bit more with the base, he's all done. Now, let me just read to you what the Death Guard Codex says about the Glooming Lords. The Glooming Lords are a morose host of killers who march to war surrounded by colossal clouds of droning black demon flies. They harbor a particular hatred for the sorcerous warbands of Chinch, whose vibrant, colorful vigor they regard as insufferable. Belonging to the sixth play company, the Ferrymen, the Glooming Lords are led by heavy formations of Blight Lord Terminators. Their bodies seethe with crawling flies as they crush the enemy contemptuously underfoot. 
If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And check out the links in the description below for my Instagram, Facebook and Patreon. And leave a comment or send a message if you will have an idea about what I should paint next in a grimdark style. Thank you for watching. See you next time.